combat preparations. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, into the Nexus Gaming series. On the left-hand side, we are going to be having the members of Loxed in with Tanks on the Tychus, Hart to play the Kale Thuzad, Clan on the Joanna, Nemesis on the Lili, and Lox to play the Uncle Chen. I'm sorry, you, you expect me to be able to touch my toes? No, I can't touch my toes. That's weird. Only weirdos can do that. Boogans forever on the right-hand side. We'll have a Kala, ETC, Izik on the Leoric. Thundercats on the Ana, and we got ourselves another Cho Gaul, ladies and gentlemen. Non-champion on the Cho, Miller Coffee on the Gaul. Joanna's going to be going into Laws of Hope level 1. Get your stack questing gamble in, ladies and gentlemen. How many level 1 stacks for the Joanna by the end of the game? Get thy gambles in. Non-fee. Non-fee on the Cho Gaul. With the correct skin... Many nipples. <laughs> oh, we get a activated minigun from Tychus and Overkill as well, trying to burn up some of that Cho'Gal health pool, uh, HP, but it doesn't seem to work out. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just skimming chat, making sure I'm not missing anything. Wow, no gamblers? That's unfortunate. I took too long in between games and everybody left. You can stretch to try. You don't need to succeed. It stretches the hamstrings. I can't touch my toes, though. I've never been able to touch my toes, chat. And it's not like I'm not memeing around. I remember I, I had a physical when I was in my teens, and the doctor was like, all right, touch your toes. And I was like, I can't. And she was like, that's funny. I was like, no, I can't. <laughs> I've never been able to. Oh, Chogol gets the camp on the bottom right of the map. Ah, we got some odds. Thank you, chat. Thank you, chat. Left-hand side, Lili. And Tychus will grab a f siege camp for the top lane. Izik is, I think, just getting some vision on this. Ah, the, yeah, definitely, definitely going to see the enemy with that grenade popping over onto Leoric. Kill the Zod gets one stack on those chains. Tries to go fishing for an enemy hero around, but there's no one to be had. What's up, Yumi? How you doing, bud? It's the second Chogol game of the day we've had. I'm happy about it. This game came recommended by actually a couple of different people. I was told this is going to be a good series, and I am not disappointed at the beginning. Second in a row. Yes, yeah, even better. Yeah, second in a row. Last best of three had a Towers of Doom map with a Cho'Gal, which was fun. Control point A is going to be opening up here. Surging Fist in from Cho'Gal. We have ETC power sliding on to the Lili. Surging Fist once again onto Nemesis. They can't take down the Lili quick enough. It's Cho'Gal, the one to fall. The Ark is going to try and Wraith walk out and be able to do so. And this is going to be the Biotic Emitter, Biotic emitter going over to the side of... Uh, Locks it in. You don't really need to touch them for the stretch to work, but I can't touch my toes. <laughs> what am I actively trying to do? Touch my touch my shins? Chen keeps soaking up bottom lane. He's going to go into the uh, withering flame, or excuse me, the accumulating flame at level 4. He's also got the Storm Stout secret recipe at level 1. 29% in rising over to the side of Loxedin here in Division A as they also get their 7 talent tier. Subdue for the Joanna. 11 stacks, by the way, for that Joanna as well. Looking pretty good. As we have a little low gamble on this one, people not as confident here. ETC, by the way, going to pick up some utility at level 4 with his uh, crowd surfer but you also have the guitar hero and the hammer on synergy oh I appreciate it Yumi thank you very much bud speaking of YouTube if you're here watching here on Twitch be sure to follow the stream if you were watching over on YouTube like and subscribe as it does support
All right, and we're back. And we're back, everybody. F5 your streams. All right. And yeah, that's working. Cool. All right, there we go. We're back into it. Well, that probably killed some of my viewership. That's a bit of a bummer, but it is what it is. Welcome back in. Sorry about that. Looks like uh, my internet died for a moment, and now Heroes of the Storm is going to struggle. Okay, I'm pinwheeling Heroes of the Storm. I absolutely love it. Let's uh, let's go ahead and pull ourselves out of the game really quickly. Uh, F5 your stream if you have not, as uh, the Twitch chat. There we go. We're back. Yeah, yeah. My my uh, just my internet decided to die. My internet decided to die and kill my viewership, so there's that. Here's the storm is now pinwheeling. Uh, would I like to close the program or wait for it to, to respond? I will wait for Heroes to respond, because we all know it's a well put together uh, game. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. That is literally out of my control. The internet decided to restart, and if you stuck around, thanks for being here. If you left, heck you. Oh, Heroes, okay. That was the, I. That, that's just tilting, but okay, whatever. Whatever, that's tilting, but it's whatever. Battle.net security check, why? I'm getting a call, give me a second. I love getting spam calls for no fucking reason. Thanks for being a Detroit Edison customer. I haven't given Detroit Edison money in almost eight years. Can you fuck off? <sighs> Thanks for being a Detroit Edison customer. Report and block as spam. Stupid. Sound? What about sound? This is why you don't answer your phone. Well, it's... It's it's a it's a number from an area that could actually call me, so technically there, there's, there's reason for me to actually answer. That's the thing I fucking hate about it is that one day that could be an emergency and I'm going to be like, well, I don't want to answer because it's probably a bot, you know? Not mean? All right, chat. Sorry for the delay. My apologies. Uh, the internet decided to reset. If you're as obnoxious as me, no one will ever call. I'd call you, Stark. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Spectrum is a shit internet company and decided to reset my modem and router, so we're back at it. We're a little bit before the timer of the objective phase. We we know, actually, the, 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 uh, the stream kind of died right as the objective phase ended, but we'll get back into this right now. We've got some healing darts coming out from Thundercats as Chogol is doing their best to pressure onto this. A uh, Bider grenade goes out onto Lili, and they do get the kill onto her. The fortification camp thrown onto the ground, or excuse me, the Bider committer and the fortification camp thrown down. We have a trade under the ETC. It is going to be some delicious uh, ribs for dinner, as well as a Ana on top of that. Bugen's OP. Um... I hate to tell you this Kaimo trips in, but they're currently losing. Sun will, will peel Ana, right? Yeah, like a banana. You think spam would come from your area code, but no? Oh yeah, my spam, spam comes from my area code. My dad told me that one time he actually got a call from my number. And it was uh, like a, a bot. And he's like, I don't know how that was possible. I was like, me neither, that's weird. 
because he called me. He called me and he's like, "Hey, you just called me," and it was like, "Not you." I was like, oh. I'm calling from the future, father. Anyways, uh, first objective phase will be done, and that'll be keep a uh, fort front gate going down on the side of Boogans forever. Ten talents here, almost here. So let's of course do what we do normally, and cycle through those other numbers, get an idea of what the damage healing experience does look like. Um. Vaylock, thank you for the brand new Prime Gaming. We'll resend your alert when we get out of game. Thank you so much for your support for the channel. Yay, fish. Thank you. Troubleshooting IT stuff with my boomer family members is a nightmare. Troubleshooting Discord issues with my family for video chat days is a nightmare, but I'm trying to get them off of Skype. I've literally told them, I'm like, dude, like, I was like, if you ever need to get a hold of me faster than, like, the fastest way, it's faster than calling me, message me on Discord. So I've been slowly teaching my parents Discord, but of course, you know, Discord resets audio and stuff like that, so it's not always the easiest, but. Yay, a butt. Mm hmm. So we got tens on both sides. Uh, Draken laser drill. Frost Nova for the Kilthazad. Bless Shield on the Joanna. Jugs for the Lili. Um, I was going to say, is it Wandering Keg or is it going to be the Storm Earth and Fire? And it will be Storm Earth and Fire for the Chen. On the opposing side, Stage Dive ETC and Tomb Leoric. Twisting Nether for the Ch uh, Gaul. Nano Bustana and Twilight Hammer for the Cho. I wonder what Lily's here for, aside from adventure. Blinds. <laughs> Blinds. Fa oh wait, no, just fast feet. Actually, let me correct myself. She's just she's she is actually here for an adventure. Ah uh, yes, the classic blind encounter. Uh yeah yeah you know the blinds are gonna, they counter Ana because she can't healing dart. That's the joke. Okay. Panda time, I mean, there's that. Lily counters Ana's DPS, obviously. Say, there we go, thank you. A huge state, uh, excuse me, huge power slide from the ETC. Somehow, Heart has the extended Kel'Thuzad chains, which is a little bit longer. Top lane forward is going to be just eradicated. Minion wave is here. Tychus has got the minigun active. He is slicing. He is dicing. By the way, it is a uh, Master Assassin level four, and it's six stacks already because they've gotten a couple Cho'Gal kills. I know, right? Exactly. Like the red team killed the Zod chains for the blue team. This is ridiculous. All right. Objective phase number two in our third best of three of the day. Here on Volskaya Foundry, we've got Locks it in with 13 talents here advantage, and they're going to be leaving the point. Interesting. Okay. That was interesting. I, I don't know why they did that, but okay. I, it didn't look like there was any threat on the map, but... Is it is it crowd server? Yeah, 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 it is crowd server. I, di I did mention that, but my stream might have died when I was mentioning that. Well, at least the session didn't reset. It still says three hours on my end, and it doesn't look like ads reset either, which is very good. I spent so much time today trying to get ahead of the ad block, so we, we have bigger windows. All right, well, it's seemingly like Cho'Gal will deny the objective to the members of Loxidin for the time being. Boogans forever working their way back over here into the top. As we also will see the Encore for ETC, that's going to be some percent. 5% off his 75 second cooldown for stage dive as Leor gets onto the point. Now Cho'Gal can step out to zone a little bit. And ETC can still split soak, pull that experience up as they are a little bit behind in experience from those early game kills. All right, there's the Entomb. Twisting Nether activated as well. Some chains out from Kale Zod, who's going to try and... He can't... Oh, he doesn't even get the fortif... He doesn't get the bi Biotic Emitter out in time. He just gets blasted. Kala will go down. ETC will fall. 
Lili does get picked off in the trade. Klen as well. Tychus goes down, and this is a Storm Earth and Fire Chen. That is gonna be just bopped around a little bit here. Now you gotta kill all three of these Storm Earth and Fire before the timer expires if you wanna kill Chen. He will get back into his main form here in just a second. He had a whole lot of HP still. And now we've got a Triglaw Protector with Leoric on inside, Cho'Gal sieging as well. Nicely done. Good damage in from Cho'Gal and Boogans into this top lane fort. They'll take down a structure and find parity on the map as it's 5-5 five to five in forts. But of course, mid lane got a little bit of damage, and I think Boogans, they want to do the same thing. Or are they going to set up for control point C? Because everyone knows control point C, Trig loves in the game. Good laser onto the fort front gate here. The minion wave available. Hildazad just getting some quick stackage off the Trig Law Protector. Seems like Ana and Leoric are going to go for a bit more damage onto the fort. They get one of those charge strikes. A rocket glove forces Klen right into the face of Cho'Gal, who Twilight hammers that away. Twisting Nether will be activated. The Bless Shield from the Joanna. Surging Fist in. That's also a Frost Nova locking down three. Huge change from Kale to Zod. Ana's the one to go down. Power slide through with the stage, uh, the crowd surfer, I mean. A mana boost is applied to Cho Gaul. So much damage is just being thrown out onto the ground. Leoric will go down. Master of the Cold Dark is finished out by the Kill to Zod, and they're going to clean up this fight. Cho Gaul does go down. And here's the sad part. Here's the really sad part. Team kill! Tychus wasn't around for this, so he got, like, no stacks on Master Assassin because Tychus died earlier on. Oh, that's going to be so annoying as Tychus. You'd be so close to finishing Master Assassin. So the answer to why Lili, I think we just saw it. Man, I mean, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta be a little, little sad about that if you're the Tychus player. Five kills would have put you like one stack below Master Assassin. Don't question my math; just accept it. That's that's the, that's the new meme. It's no longer it's no longer, oh Bahamut's wrong. It's just you just accept whatever math I give you, and if you don't like it. You can take it up with Mr. Timeout. <laughs> Tychus and Kael'thuzad in the top lane looking to chase this Leoric. Some chains applied. Wraithwalk to maybe get a self, uh, sort of self-cleanse out of that. They're gonna do their best to back away. The Frost Nova will be thrown out. Kael'thuzad does go down. And Tychus is gonna activate his minigun. He's gonna try and slice, dice, and get some damage, but Cho, or excuse me, Gaul gets the double kill on Lili and Tychus. The nano boost value is coming through. ETC is gonna cook up a Kel'Thuzad. It's ETC now, the barbecue master, and that'll be a dead Joanna. Somehow, some way, the members of Boogans Forever still have Cho'Gal alive in that, and I think we gotta be thanking Thundercats in this moment for keeping your allies alive. Also, that. Nano boost on Cho'Gal was very good. And with that, it looks like Keep Friend Gate in top lane is going to be going down. 30 seconds on average for these four players. A little bit more, a little bit less. But we're just going to round on that number. And this might be Keep, honestly, with the momentum and the damage available. Liar can use Entomb in four seconds. Thanks for letting us know. This flying Kick is going to be met by a... Twilight Hammer locks us a little bit of stagger damage. Oh, you can't drink through that much pain! More blood for the blood gods as... Cho'Gal will Molten Block. Kael'Thuzad takes down Thundercats. They all just needed mana. That was it. That was it. They all just needed mana. But yeah, I, I was very surprised they were attempting to go core off of that right there. And this is going to be Tychus picking up a few kills. Happy about this now. As ETC is the lone the lone uh, survivor. Did someone say blood for the blood god? Yes, indeed. All right, 30-some seconds on average. Leoric will try and cheat death a little bit off of uh, Lili with some Drain Hope in the ghost form. 
We have the Elemental Conduit, level 20 for Chen. We'll see the Shake It Off for Lili. We have Radiating Faith, Joanna. Death Chill on the Kel'Thuzad. When Frost Blast roots expire, enemies are slowed for 40% for 3 seconds. Heroes killed while under the effects of Frost Blast instantaneously release another Frost Blast explosion. Uh, when I play Kel'Thuzad and Arams, I take this, and it's it's dumb amounts of fun, especially if you get the big kills. And then focusing Dioids, uh, Dioids, Di Dioids, I don't think I'm saying that right, but either way, uh, for the Draken Laser Drill upgrade. On the opposing side, it will be the Hour of Twilight, Death, uh, Cho'Gal Death Timer reduced by 50%. Twilight Frenzy, activate to reduce the cooldown of Shadow Flame Dread Orb for two seconds for the next six seconds. So a lot of spam ability. Buried Alive, Death Metal for the ETC, and Ana will go into the Nano Infusion. Damage dealt uh, will be... Spell damage dealt comes back as healing. 50% of it, sorry. Verbiage on that was uh, sloppy on my end. Yes, Floor Juice. Thank you for using the proper emote. Yes, the Floor Juice. 17 to 12 in kills. Tyke is two stacks away from getting his Master Assassin. He'd have 25% bonus attack speed. Chen Flying kicks in. The objective channel goes back over to the members of Locks It In. ETC is in the top lane, but he's got the stage dive available. Here's the Frost Blast from Kael Thazad. Stage dive into the flank. That's going to be the target onto Kael Thazad. He gets annihilated immediately. He buys back in with the Phylactery stacks. Chogal's got to get out of here. Some healing reduction applied from Joanna's level 7. Thundercats spams a bunch of healing darts before falling as Chen loses a, one of his pandas in this Storm Earth and Fire. But Cho'Gall goes down. Master Assassin's done for Tychus. He is just shredding now. ETC tries to get out of here. The power slide. Lili still chasing in. Kala getting some wor uh, work out here on the uh, conveyor belt going the wrong way. But the bottom lane fort will fall. Top lane's got a decent wave that ETC shoved in before he joined into the fight in the t in the bottom lane. But as I had mentioned, Cho went into the Hour of Twilight, decreased the Cho'Gal death time by 50%. So they're already back in the mix. ETC going to do ETC things in the mid. Push things up. Trigglaw Protector will go over the side of Boogans forever. Leorp does not have enough mana for Entomb. Thank you for letting us know. Oh my god. Cho'Gal just gets chunked down to like 20% HP. Has to get out of here immediately. ETC, working on mid lane. Just trying to be a solo laner right now. Objective phase? Wow, it's not really shoving up the wave as I was expecting. I thought there was going to be a little bit more aggression from this. Lili right behind. Going to try and throw out some blinds here and there. Joan in the top lane is defending up against the ETC. That does not seem like a very interesting fight. <laughs> ETC is just ignoring her. Like, I love that. Fast respawn? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hour of Twilight. Stage dive from the ETC in the flank. Going to look for some sort of power slide through the enemy. Twisting Nether, Nano Boost, they're focusing on to Nemesis. The Lili does go down. Joanna trying to join in as well. She was busy clearing things out, and that stage dive from ETC helped a ton. Now, here's the question. Will they be able to take down the Storm Earth and Fire? You got to take down all three of these to take down Chen, because that's health bar. Oh my god, no way they're going to do it. I, I rarely see all three killed. Usually one of them gets away, but it was like a half a second window, it seemed that uh, Chen was going to be able to get back into his main form with all that health back. That top lane wave that ETC shoved still being cleared out by the Joanna. Speaking of, we did have a gamble before this since we had a little uh, DC on the stream. And uh, 33 stacks for the Joanna currently. Purifying darts. Healing dart removes roots and slows from the target. Also heals 20% more, so doing so. That's If you're wondering why the Kael Thazad chains didn't do anything last time. Oh, it was, uh... Alright, sorry, the root, I think. Stage dive from ETC. It's still the honor to go down. Nano boost to Cho'Gal is currently saying, I would like to end the game and just win. And I do think that's going to happen here. I don't actually think they get to, to Cho'Gal because the death metal from ETC... Twisting Nether, Stasis, that does buy a window because Gaul can still use abilities. And it will be Cho'Gal who take the game here. What a bloodbath, 24 to 16 in kills.
Oh, you could have dealt 200 more. You could 200 more healing, Lily. But the stacks, Chogal OP confirmed. Uh, how many level one for Joanna? 39 or less. She had 33 at the end. 33 at the end. Alrighty, let's go ahead and get ourselves set up for the next map. I need to run to the bathroom super duper bad. As, uh... I haven't in a while. So let's get everything set up for the next map and I'll run to the bathroom. I'll run a tiny block of ads. All right, players are on the correct sides. And then we'll get going to our next map. Mm -mm -mm. Cursed Hollow. All right, as I said, I'm gonna run some small ads and then I'll be right back, okay? Man, my, uh, my back is tight. Yo, Cav, what's up, bud? How's the Vegas trip? How goes the Vegas trip, my friend? I saw the photo in Discord today. Looks like you made it okay. I don't think you made it to Rome. <laughs> All right, let's see. What do we got here for this? Good? Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad. I, I raided uh, the other side as he was driving last night. I don't know if you guys have all met up together yet. I don't know. All right, we could do regeneration globes for uh, Kalefoss. There's an Alarak. We could do stackage for Alarak. Let's do that. Let's do stackage for Alarak. So we'll make a... You won a hundred bucks? Was it off the one dollar that I told you to bet on red? Because if that's the case, I would like one dollar of that. <laughs> you haven't played Hudson forever, should you? Yeah. Why not? It's a fun game. It's free. We're all uh, we're all in the same house. Oh well, tell everyone I said hi. Tell Jay to take uh, pop that top. Uh yeah, that's uh, uh, tell everyone I said hi and tell Jay to pop his top. Uh, that's 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 my <coughs> message. Uh, how much sadism at N for Alarak? Uh, what, uh, a hundred or less? One oh one two. What's the base? One thirty. Right? Yeah, one thirty. So one oh one to one thirty. Uh, one thirty one. Uh, or more. All right, I think this is fairly clear. If you don't understand the gamble, I hopefully will clear that up when I explain it. Yeah, 130 is base maximum, thank you, okay. 
Um, I didn't look at any of the I didn't look at any of the talents for augment, so that's why I'm just trying to use general like stuff. All right, uh, let's go ahead and get into it. Let's go ahead and get into it. Good afternoon. Welcome, Actari. Just in time for a map for number two in our third best of three of the day. On the right-hand side, we got Boogans Forever looking to close things out in a 2-0. We got Miller on the Falstad, Isaac to play the Genji, Thundercats will be on the Brightwing, Kala to play the ETC, and Non-Champion on the Alarak. Over on the side of Locks It In, we got a Kerrigan on uh, played by Lox, Nemesis on the Abathur, Clen will be on the Kalefoss, Hart to play a new Brack, and Tankst on the Oofer. So I pose this question to all of you. How much sadism at the end for Alarak? How much will he have at the end of the game? This is an overwhelming power Alarak at level one. So no uh, augment yet uh, on his uh, sadism. Could go show a force that can raise it up to 150 max. You feel like it'll, your life is a lot less stressful without Here's the Storm? Well, then just don't be stressed while playing Here's the Storm. Next question. <laughs> That's great news, General. Congratulations. On the contrary, I mourn. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Kev. All right, anyways, there's a gamble going on right now if you'd like to make predictions. There is an Abathur in top lane. We all know Ninja loves rooting for Abathurs. It is going to also be a Survival Instincts Abathur, so you might just see more of a macro play, more of a uh, push play from Abathur, and a little less hatting onto uh, things like Kerrigan. Just don't be stressed. Bingo or play Heroes Bingo, yeah. Bingo's always a fun way to enjoy the game. Stun from Uther, ETC tries to back away. Anubarak has an impale. Kerrigan with the primal grasp and not able to pull anyone back. And somehow, some way, Kahl is able to wiggle his way out of that one. And ETC is not going to be cooked up and served for dinner. 103 Sadism for the Alarak so far as they've had one kill. And we're about to get into level fours and we'll see what Alarak goes into. If he's going to be a show of force, maybe we'll see uh, Sadism reduction as well. You want stress if Susso and drop 500 in a game last night and lose? I'll never forget the time when my brother and I, before I moved up here, it was actually the year I was looking at houses and stuff. My brother and I went to the casino together and we were playing blackjack and we both went in with $20. We, we, we ended up playing for like an hour and a half and there was a guy who was making like side comments and stuff like based on how we were betting. That dude, Lost $250 in the time my brother and I played 20 each, and we walked out with 40 each. So, I don't know who the who the uh, bigger loser is in that moment. <laughs> oh, I, I, you're gonna hit on a 15? Oh my god, that's not how you play it. Gather tribute and earn my favor. Meanwhile, that guy's buying $100 worth of chips every 20 minutes or so. He actually burned a lot more money than I than I than I said. I think he actually I think it was closer to like four hundred bucks in like an hour and a half. Uh, looks like auto attack Alarax will probably show a force. Indeed, it is show a force. Max Sadism now can be a hundred and fifty, as you can max out at twenty from this and twenty from the base. Blackjack seating. Oh, pfft, or backjack. <laughs> Kerrigan gets a combo, followed up by the gravity lapse of Kalefoss. Nicely done. That'll be a kill into Genji. First kill of the game for the side of Locks It In. As Tanksta looks for the channel ATC threatens. But if he gets on a roll, it'll be a lot more. Well, all I'll say is this. I gained $20 in the time someone lost 300 so I think I might be the one playing blackjack a little bit better. Just, just, just gonna throw that out there. <laughs> Hindered momentum does not reduce the max statism, only uh, telekinesis slow uh, is now, at, is now, telekinesis now has a 30% slow for three seconds.
Glenn looking cute right now? Don't you be coming into my Twitch? Don't you come into my Twitch chat and start and start saying how much you love these players? Oh, we did not get him any gambles for that, did we? Unfortunate. Bum, 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 bum. Abathur level seven. What is he gonna be going into? He went into Needle Spine four. Uh, Uther Cleanse. So I'm just skimming through the talents. I need to sit up straight. Ugh. It's been hard to sit up straight with my lower back issues. No, that is, again, yeah, Network Carapace. It is going to be more of a push build for the Abathur. Miller gets the channel uninterrupted. One to one in our tribute points for both sides. Non-champion continues to work in top lane. 108 sadism for the gamblers in chat. Probably gonna get a bet in here and cast laying down. <laughs> I wish. No! Sadism down to 100 as Alarak will fall in the top lane. We've got our 10 Talenteers cycling through soon, so let's go ahead and... Oh, Miller! It is. It was almost Miller time for Kerrigan. Looks like the Falstad's going to be able to tap well. Thundercats does not want to spread Living Bomb to the allies. Kerrigan trying to ravage away. Locks so very low, 100 HP. But Genji able to get the Swift Strike through and finds the kill onto Kerrigan. Are Miller Coffee and Sil Coffee on the same side or are they rivals? Probably rivals. Probably rivals. I heard Sil Coffee burn down a tree once. Boss to be grabbed in the top lane. Abathur continues to push things out. Stage dive ETC, wind tunnel, or excuse me, Gust from the False Dead, X Strike Genji, Blink kills the Bright Wing, and Counter Strike on the Alarak. On the opposing side, they do not have 10s yet. See, this is when you blind stage dive in while your team is still crossing the map. Now, this is when you stage dive into the objective area, balls, ballsy. You know, you play that aggressive. Izzik gets one delay. There's a stage dive in from the ETC, focusing onto the Kael'thas. He will fall. Extract from Genji pokes onto Heart with some shurikens to follow up, but the beetles are dropped, and non-champion gets the channel. They have the kill into Kael'thas, and they're going to get double boss? The back of my head, I was like, oh, I wonder if they'll double boss off this, because there's no, there, you know, it wasn't being worked on by locks it in, but holy heck. So top lane boss is at 50%, working on the fort. Bottom lane, this, you can't do this, Anubarak! Especially with Uther still in top lane, Kael'thas respawning. Not sure what the game plan was right there. Not sure if they were just looking to poke, but I feel like at that time, it's not even necessary to even poke. You just accept fate, and you wait for things to come to you in the sense of the waves crashing in. Pyroblast, Kael'thas, Ultra Lisk Kerrig Ultra Ultra Kerrigan. Ultimate Evolution on the Abathur. We've got a Cocoon on a Nubarak, and last but not least, Divine Storm for the Uther. Divine Storm, yes. Not Divine Shield. Yeah. I always, like, I never, I never like flaming players. I just, I just, in my, uh, I don't know, that, that felt rude of me. I hate I hate flaming players because 90% of the player base that I cast is better than I am mechanically or knowledge based. I just know how to talk okay. But either way, everyone's back. We don't have a talent tier advantage to the side of uh, Boogans. Boss in bottom lane is a little less than 50%, but it did take down the fort. Abathur does not have mule. Oh, bush party. Oh, non-champion with the check with the telekinesis. Nicely done. Oh, uh, sorry. I was looking at Twitch chat. I thought the fight was still around the objective area. Face shift on to the Alarak right now. 106 sadism. Tries to get another combo onto Lox. There will be a clone of the Kerrigan, now trying to Ravage. That's going to be a Counter-Strike activated by the Alarak. The Uther will fall. Kerrigan goes down as well. A very low non-champion has got 112 Sadism, gets the Telekinesis out. The Ultralisk will be killed as well. Big uh, space 
dogs. Oh, Miller throws the hammering back and is like, I think I'm dead, but maybe I can trade on this. And that will be a penta, excuse me, quadra kill for the side of Boogans Forever. Technically, you could call it a penta kill since they did get the Kerrigan clone. But either way, this will be a curse. 13 talent tier and Genji, he's looking for an Abathur. Nah, he's just going to go straight for a keep in top lane. Got it. Abathur is also going to play things safe around the Hall of Storms. Divine Shield, Gravity Lapse, and goodbye, Genji. Cocoon into the Bright Wing. This opens up a window to set up around her. Will she be able to get away fast enough? No. So they lose two. The keep is at like 90% HP. Midfort will go down. Falstad's grabbing a camp. And boss will be up in a minute and two, 20 seconds. All right. Alarak Sadism's at, Sadism at 112%. Mid-Believer's feeling pretty good about that. By the way, he's also Blades of the High Lord, so his max Sadism is 170% now. That's not right, Chris. That's not right. It's 190. I didn't add all the math. I just added some of the math. No, no, I was right the first time. 170, which is 190. You just have to accept all numbers that I give you. <laughs> 130 plus 20 plus 40. Yeah, 170. I don't, I don't why, why are we talking about this? <laughs> all numbers are the same. Exactly, yeah. Five to ten in our kills right now. <laughs> Sweet. And that math we can do. Genji on the left hand side looking for a bit of a flank. Doesn't doesn't see any sort of opportunity as the rest of the team's backing away. Genji's not sharking around for Abathur, is he? He does see that the locust is in bottom lane. Uh, he's not gonna go for anything, okay. 114 on the Alarak Sadism. Bosses are going to be starting to spawn on the northeast and southwest side of the map. And 30 seconds on the bottom left. We do have Bruiser Camp to be grabbed in the meantime. It's 170 to 170 in kills. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah that sounds about right to me. Sixteen stacks for the false dead, by the way, and his level one. We didn't really talk about that. Kalefoss does all have all of his globes. The boss in the bottom lane is ten seconds off, and who I wonder if they go for the double rotation again. I mean, he's sixteen talents here for the time being. Just looking at false dead flight. Yeah, he's got it. Etc could stage dive and false dead could fly, but it's a little risky. Looks like actually Etc will stick around in the top lane, clear things out. Thundercats in mid. Check the bush with a telekinesis. A new Brack burrows away. Some my okay. Etc goes to the stage dive in and gets immediately gravity lapsed. Takes a little bit of damage. Face shift from Brightwing coming through. Nicely done. The pyroblast throw it onto Etc, but no barbecue for dinner this time. Counter strike from Alarak will go out, but Brightwing's the one to fall. Carapace from Kerrigan activated. Uh, Genji on the left hand side does use the X strike to back away. We have Falstead flying, uh, barrel rolling in to try and just take down the clone of the Anubarak. Nemesis is that Abathur player. Gust is forced out by the False Dead. Nemesis clone will expire. A little hammering thrown back. Meanwhile, the boss in top lane is going to be taking down this keep, despite Abathur's best attempt. Okay. Has destroyed a fort. Another tribute's up and available. This will be in the top uh, left of the map. No curse for either side. And it looks like actually Genji's gonna get this while the boss goes over to the side of Bugans Forever, or excuse me, of uh, Locks It In. E into house in kills. I don't know. Why are, you, why are you posting a house in my chat? Or no, is that a table? Oh, it's E to table in kills. Got it. Okay. Your table's got a crooked leg. Did you see that, Ektar? One of your, one of your legs on your table's crooked there. Might want to get that fixed. I know this guy. I know this carpenter. 
But like, people didn't like him all of a sudden, and then, well, actually, he's, he's kind of busy, actually. <laughs> he's behind a rock. It's the ETC, but the C fell over. It's <laughs> good. You saw Pi in Las Vegas? Yeah, that makes sense. Now I'm thinking about Pi, god damn it. <laughs> A new break burrows in, the gust does not work out from Falstead. Here comes the stage dive in from ETC trying to go for a flank. Kerrigan immediately grabs him and throws out the Ultralisk on top of that. There's a swift strike through onto Clan. The Divine Shield, or excuse me, Divine Storm from Uther does not dissuade this kill from Genji. And Kael'thas is the first one to go down. A new break gonna look for the trade into Izzik as the soothing mist from Thundercats is activated. Izzik's able to get the swift strike out and Kael'tha, or excuse me, Genji lives for the time being. Counter-Strike from Mountain Champion activated. Gets some decent damage as locks will fall on the Kerrigan. This is going to be a quadra kill for the members of Boogans Forever. 26 to 43 seconds of death timer and with one keep already down and this one low on the low uh, no no Genji's just going for core the symboly I don't know what you're talking about Kev no don't ruin your don't ruin your KDA nemesis don't do it don't do it you got so much to live for he was he was trying to do he was trying to do the uh, the Abathur worm. I, I saw like he's tried to do the dance, but yeah, nice attempt. But it is gonna be Boogans to take the series. Sadism check. Calm down. Calm down, Actar. God, you can at least give me your prime gaming. No. The only other spoiler I had about the series, aside from the Cho'Gall, was the Alarak was a panic picked in draft. They had to put offlaner uh, Izzik onto Genji. Interesting. Well, the the Cho'Gall wasn't a well. I don't think Cho'Gall was spoiled for me. I was literally just told by a bunch of people, "Hey, you should cast this one," and I was like, "Okay." I don't think anyone told me about Cho'Gall. Oh, it was spoiled to you. Got you. Okay, sorry. I misunderstood. My bad. Uh, Alarak Sadism, uh, he had 131 or more. 